Alright, good morning everybody. This is Justin, aka Demonic Sweaters, and I'm back again with another Rose Garden tutorial. This is Rose Garden Part 3, and uh, if you haven't seen Parts 1 and 2, you should go back and watch those if you're not familiar with Rose Garden at all. Um, let me get some junk out of the way here on my screen. I can close my music player. And um, I apologize for my voice. Uh, I'm a little bit hoarse, a little bit sick, uh, but not too bad, so hopefully I can get through this okay. And, um, this may be a kind of a short tutorial. I'm not totally sure. We'll see how it goes. But the main thing that I wanted to touch on here, um, let me just close out this uh, notation edit window. Let me make note what measure I'm on. 50. Okay, so I completed a whole other song here in Rose Garden. And a couple of the things that I had talked about in the previous episodes uh, were mainly with uh, sequencing MIDI uh internal MIDI as well as external MIDI. And so on this uh, particular project, I've also included some audio, uh, which is here and here, as well as here. I have some vocals, uh, it's mostly just oohs and ahs, uh, no real lyrics or anything. And then I also use some software synths. Um, but the main thing I wanted to touch on here, I will briefly go over those, but what I was working on at the moment and wanted to show you guys was uh, notation uh, because one of the powerful features of Ro Rose Garden is music notation uh, features. And so right here, if we look at our bass track uh, that I have here, um, this is a, I use the, my K1 sound font synth uh, for the bass sound. What you can see down here where it says create segments with under the uh, track parameters, you can see that I have electric bass guitar fretted uh, loaded there, and contrabass is the clef. Now this doesn't actually happen by default. Well, you can set that before you start recording, but you can also do it after you've already recorded something. For example, if I go here to uh, my DX7, uh, which I'm actually using Hexter. I don't want to get off topic, but Hexter is a cool uh, DX7 emulator for Linux. And you can actually load real Yamaha DX7 SysX uh, files into it. So it's really good. But anyway, let me stay on topic here. And uh, what I wanted to uh, show you was, okay, so right here in Create Segments With, if I go here and I go to Load, what you can do is you can actually select. Um, and when it's talking about segments in this situation, uh, down here in this whole area is talking about the notation. So what we could do... Um, that actual synth sound is more of just a standard synth. So we could go here to keyboards. I think this is where this would be. And then let's go to see if there's something similar. Electronic organ, no. Organ. Okay, so keyboard, synthesizer, treble. So that will be appropriate for that. Player ability. Uh, this, I believe, is going to determine uh, the complexity of the notation. Uh, but I could be wrong about that but I'm pretty sure that's what it means. So now what you could do is you can actually convert existing segments and just click OK. And now that'll take everything in that DX7 channel and convert the notation uh, appropriately. So if we open this up in our notation editor and go back to the beginning, we'll see the correct clef right there, which of course it was already a treble clef uh, to begin with, but <clears throat> If it weren't, uh, well, actually, I should show you the bass because that'll uh, show you or give you a better example. So if we open this in our notation editor and we go back to the beginning here, you can see that it is now a bass clef because I performed that operation there and selected electric bass. And then it converted all the notation to uh, bass clef, which is great. So if you want to share these scores with people and help them learn what you wrote, uh, you can actually make some pretty readable notation uh, if you mess with it. Now, that brings me to my next point. Uh, by default, or not by default, but what happens like if you're playing MIDI and you're recording, uh, the notation that ends up coming out in Rose Garden is going to look pretty messy and weird. And what I mean by that, let's go up here to where I left off, which was measure 50, uh, somewhere around here. If we open this up in our notation editor, you could see, actually, no, that one's, okay, so we're not to 50 yet. Let's go to the next one. 
All right, so you can see that this measure or these measures look pretty weird. Um, you have these 16th note dotted 16th note rests and like a 32nd note rest there. Um, so if you tried handing this to a bass player, they'd be like, what are you doing? So one of the cool things about uh, Rose Garden, and I actually didn't know this until very recently, if we select all the notes there and we go to quantize, now if we were quantizing MIDI data, it would actually change how it sounds. But if we quantize in the notation view and we use the heuristic notation quantizer, what this will do, it actually, it's, it's talking about quantizing the notation rather than the actual uh, MIDI data. So what this will do is basically transform this into a more readable score. And the way to do that is just by using this quantizer. So <clears throat> right here we have complexity. Uh, this, you can, you know, you can play with this if it's not coming around or if it's not looking the way you want it to be, you can change from high to very high. Nor normal is the default. Most of the time that's going to work, but I was just playing around with it and high seemed to give me good results. Uh, bass grid unit, 32nd note. Uh, I've been able to leave that alone. Uh, uh, tuplet level. This is going to determine what level of tuplets, and I don't exactly know what that means, uh, but I think if you're a more uh, advanced uh, notation writer, you probably will. Uh, and then here, rebeam is going to basically rebeam the notes uh, like the way it's drawn and then all of these you can just check and if we just click OK Now you can see it's made that much more readable. So now we just have you know quarter notes uh, With eighth notes rests rather than those dot, you know, it's just much more readable than it was before so This uh, would actually work if you handed this to a bass player They'd probably be able to read that whereas opposed to the other thing they might be able to figure it out, but it'd be super weird um, so the one thing you know about this let's open up another one here and let's see how it handles this i haven't done this section yet now this is actually pretty pretty readable already because it's a lot of whole notes in there uh, but i still want to do it and see what it does let's go to quantize Okay, so actually, oh yeah, yeah, that does make more sense because if you listen to this part, um, that actually looks more correct. So let me play it back and you can hear what I mean. If I can get on my timeline there. Am I already in the right spot? Yeah. So yeah, it looks pretty good. Uh, once again, it transformed it from something that was kind of a mess into something that's more readable. And so now I just have to go through and finish cleaning up all of my bass parts. And then once you get done with all of that, and you wanted to share uh, your score with somebody, um, you could just go up here and highlight what you want to print out. Uh, you can print out the entire score if you want, but say you wanted to do just uh, this little bass section here. You can go here to print preview, and then what this does, it exports it to a program called LilyPond, which is a uh, musical notation uh, score uh, printing program for Linux, and then everything should be good there. Let's just click OK, and then we'll see what it looks like. Uh-oh, did I print the whole score? I think I did. Let me do that again. So let's go here. Let's do it like this. Let's go to open a notation editor. Oh, no, there it goes. Okay, so yeah, it did print the whole score. I didn't want to do that because not all of that is completed. Uh, so the way to do it is open up the part that you want to print. There may have been an option there in the other window. I, I didn't pay a whole lot of attention, but let's go to print preview here and then export content edited segments so you could do it like this selected track so that's what i want to do let's do selected track and then click ok there 
And now, so now we have the base section. And it is pretty good all the way up into, what was it, like 50-something, then it starts to get weird again. Yeah, down here, you can see. where It's all wacky again. But uh, for the most part, uh, once I get that all completed, then I'd, I'd have a readable score that I could hand off to my bass player. And uh, if you want to actually share what you wrote to somebody, you can do it like that. So really cool stuff. Um, again, uh, with Rose Garden, you know, it lacks some features that other uh, digital audio workstations have, but it has some other ones that uh, certain ones don't. So it's pretty nice. And I like working with it. It's a lot of fun. Um, I just created this whole new song here in it. Uh, I played you a section of it, but... As you can see, I have a lot of stuff going on here. And uh, let me just go over a couple of the other things I did because I think you might find them helpful. I know this isn't as detailed as my first two uh, tutorials, but I just wanted to, you know, I was working with it and I figured I'd just show you what I was doing uh, so, you know, you could get some tips out of it if you can. Um, so anyway, the next thing I wanted to show you here is on uh, the DX7. Remember I was talking about Hexer, which is the... Uh, DX7 emulator, and if you're not familiar, I'm sure you are, but a DX7 is Yamaha, one of Yamaha's most famous synthesizers from the 1980s, and uh, like I said, Hexter actually is a really great emulator. It doesn't have a lot of, uh, a lot of, um, can I open this back up here? Sorry, I'm trying to think and talk at the same time. It doesn't have a lot of manual editing capabilities, but there are tons of DX7 patches online that you can just, you know, download and basically uh, load into the Hexter. And then you'll have all kinds of different sounds that you can play with, and a lot of them sound really great. They're very authentic sounding. Um, if we click, oh, okay, here, if we click on Editor. So this is basically what you get with Hexter. And these are all the patches. I downloaded all these patches basically in just a single SysX file. And then you can just go in here to file and then just import patch bank. And then you can load your SysX file into there. And so I have all these really cool DX7 sounds. And you can edit a few parameters. You have like, you know, pitch bin, uh, mod wheel, uh, tuning and volume and things like that. Uh, but you can't really go in and edit a patch um, really uh, too much. Uh, but you can do all this other stuff. But there's no real need to. I mean, there are so many patches available for the DX7 that you can download. I'm sure you'll find something that you like. Um, so that's that. <clears throat> and the other thing that I wanted to show you was here in my audio, the vocals. Let's play this section so you guys can hear this. So that's actually me, but I kind of sound like a robot, as you can tell. And the way I did that is by using um, Auto Talent. Now, Auto Talent is a Auto Tune plugin for Linux, and this is it right here. And basically, I just put it on there and just left everything at the default, and it was able to work just fine. And uh, this plugin has gotten way better than it used to be. Um, it's really cool. So if you want like an Auto Tune type sound. Uh, just install Auto Talent, and it is a LADSPA, and it'll work here in Rose Garden. I have a few other plugins, and that's one thing I didn't really talk about much uh, on the other tutorials were the plugins. So I have here on the vocals my first plugin is my SC4 uh, compressor, and you know you have all of your settings there, and then I have Auto Talent, and then I have uh, Reverb, the tap. Uh, reverberator which is one of my favorite Linux reverbs because it has so many different types of reverbs in it some of them kind of sound like delays and uh, it has a lot of different stuff <clears throat> excuse me so my voice is kind of it's not doing so well so I may have to cut this off but uh, I think uh, that was probably good uh, just to give you guys some more ideas of what you can do uh, in Rose Garden I'm gonna keep going through this this whole thing and I want to clean up the one thing I didn't talk about was the drum score. And I'm not sure how possible it is to get readable drum scores out of Rose Garden yet. Um, because that is something that's challenging on a lot of even, you know, good 
uh, musical notation programs uh, that you know seem to have a problem with drum score because they're just different uh, than everything else. And also the way I recorded these drums, you can see I have a lot of different uh, MIDI layers on top of each other. So I'm not sure how Rose Garden will handle this. Um, actually, I don't know at all. If I highlight two, go to Notation Editor. Yeah, see that just looks horrible. Um, <laughs> if I were a drummer, well, let's see what the See, the thing is, too, is I actually did go, before I even do that, I already went here and changed this to drum set, create segments with, but it doesn't look like that Rose Garden supports a percussion clef. At least I don't think so. Maybe if I use the quantizer, it'll change it. But the other one changed it to a bass class clef when I did that create segments with load thing that I showed you earlier. But I'm not sure about uh drums but i wish it did uh because for me as a drummer that would be very useful but let me go ahead and try this quantizer thing now why is it only selecting some of the notes that's oh okay i see because those notes are actually on the top i see what it's doing those notes are on the top uh little segment here and the other notes are on the bottom segment so i'd have to do them one at a time so if i go here to quantize let's do that and then let's do the other one and see if it makes it at least a little better nah, it's still pretty bad um so yeah i'm gonna have to play around with the drum notation quite a bit more but fortunately, if I'm composing stuff to uh, give to other people, I already know the drum parts because I'm writing it and I'll be playing the drums, so I don't really have to worry about that too much. But, uh, you know, it'd be nice if you could get some readable drums out of Rose Garden. Uh, that would be great. But maybe you can, and maybe I just don't know how to do it yet. But if I do, I'll come back and make a tutorial on that too. But uh, I think that's all for now, and uh, hopefully you guys learned something. And if you have any questions or comments, you can leave them down below. And uh, feel free to subscribe and click like, and I'll see everybody really soon. Bye.